Hello there guys, welcome back to my channel for your post-match therapy session and boy do I need that today because honestly guys, I, I can't be bothered anymore, <laughs> like I, I cannot be bothered anymore, I would much rather sit here and just do a Rubik's Cube, try to solve Rubik's Cube for two hours than have to relive this game in my brain right now, I'm, I'm just stunned, I'm just stunned with them, like how can you go from what happened on Thursday to this, like we were the worst team in every metric but possession, essentially. Like, not necessarily if you watch the game, we were the worst team. But in all the metrics that have some sort of relevance, we were worse, well, or in the big one, obviously, as good. Against the team that's bottom of the Premier League. And pretty much everybody just spanks them. They conceded 81 goals so far this season. Now, sure, we scored two. But as we've learned over the last three or four or five weeks, we concede at least two every game. So if we can't even score more than two against Sheffield United, mate, we are doomed. We are doomed. Oh my god! I just how like it's they they're, they're taking this Gattuso press conference. Sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. Way too seriously. Like way too seriously. All right, just be be half decent every time. That's enough. Do you know what I mean? Oh my god! I just, I just can't hack it anymore. Batcham, uh, I just introduced you to Nashi before we went live, saying Batcham is usually Mister. Mr. Positivity and, you know, personified. I think today, probably even you'll struggle with that because, my God. I don't even know what to say. Like, the game was so bad, so boring. So, like, other than Madueke's goal, so disgraceful from top to bottom. Honestly, we're lucky that we didn't lose, really. Like, you know, they had way more chances than we did. They had way more XG. Than... Oh, man. But, um... How do you feel after, especially after what happened on Thursday? And does it does it surprise and shock you that this game went this way? Because we were speaking on Thursday after the game. We were speaking yesterday in the preview to this. Can the United result, the way it went, especially, not just the fact that we won, but the way it went, can it be a kickstarter for the rest of the season? And I genuinely thought it could have been. I, I To be honest, I thought it should have been. Even that isn't true. I thought it would be. Turns out it's not. <laughs> so, uh, thoughts? <laughs> well... I started the day out with two two hours of sleep, sat in a bus for four hours, lost Brilliant. a bet because there was over you know six goals in the Celtic Rangers game, lost Brilliant. my glasses on said bus and uh, thought it, at least I can watch you know Chelsea away to uh, to bottom of the league you know perhaps perhaps you know just a quick win to bounce off. Uh, started very good you know we saw Thiago Silva score get welcome back into the team but. Uh, I think the thing about this performance and result is uh, I could look toward, you know, the previous games we've had, you know, the Burnley result, which I think was more unfortunate than it was bad. I think we we conceded a personal mistake uh, and a screamer in that game. I thought overall it wasn't as bad as this one, at least. I think mm -hmm. this result is quite damning because, as you said, uh, we were second best, you know, in all aspects. We lost on XG to, uh, to Sheffield United. And, yeah, you can say, you know, we can see that in the, in the 90th minute, but again, we lose what three, four headers uh, at the edge of our own box. There are three attackers, two of them are offside. The one who isn't gets it. You can say it's unlucky, but realistically, we should have won this game today, uh, and we performed, you know, terribly. So we didn't deserve to. And I think it's very unfortunate because off the back of that United result, you would have hoped that the, that we've been able to, you know, build on it you know, use the momentum we have from there. But we haven't. Now we have to sit and wait until, you know, next Monday to play again. And, you know, feasibly, we can still qualify for Europe. Uh, I saw, I even saw someone said, you know, if we had, if we beat Burnley, if we'd won today, we'd be, you know, nine points off Spurs with a game in hand, maybe. Or if we won the game in hand, we'd be nine points. It's at least feasible. You know, there's at least a chance of it. And I think the thing about it is right now, I think the season is over. I don't think personally changing Poch now, you know, will do anything. I think we maybe should reevaluate in the summer, but I also think there's so much negativity around us right now. And I don't think it's helping. Um, so I think today was bad, but I still think, you know, there's, there is positivity to take from it, but not from this season. I think this season in the Premier League, at least I think it died today. It did die today. It's a really tough one because obviously the United Liverpool game beforehand Liverpool at least got a draw back for us, which made at least six still very much a, a feasible option after Thursday. 
but now it's like every time we have a chance to do something, see, that's the, that, that's the bad thing this season, right? The amount of like silly, I say silly, I don't even want to call it silly, the amount of games where we just completely blew it and were just terrible on the day or just bottled it completely. The amount of games against the, the type of teams that this happens, whether it's tonight against Sheffield United, whether it's against Burnley, whether it was twice against Bulls, whether it was against God knows where else this happened, right? United as well. United as well. Yeah, absolutely. But like we, we could so easily, without being any better than we have been, so easily be in the top six already, like so comfortably. But we are so far off. And I, I've so often blamed or used the excuse or maybe excuse the wrong word, explanation of, of, of lack of experience, of youth in the team. But honestly, the longer the season has gone on, the more the more I didn't really agree with myself when saying it, because I'm like, you're, you're just finding excuses for these lot being pathetic, really. The, the, because, yeah, it's all well and good, okay, they're young and everything, but does it really mean you need to bottle it to Sheffield United, who are bottom of the league? Like, again, sure, you can't, be, you can't be at your best every week, but does that mean you need to be at your worst every other week? It shouldn't mean that. But seemingly that, that's what's happening. Nashi, first of all, thank you for joining me once again. I appreciate it very much. Um, share your thoughts, please. Because, again, also please include what you thought about today after what happened on Thursday. Did you, did you think it could uh, be a kickstarter for the rest of the season? Or because, I mean, you said it before we went live. The shocking thing is you kind of expected us to still concede. And that's the worst indica indication of where we are, essentially, right? Because... The fact that us as fans of this football club expect us to concede and bottle it, oh, that's a bad sign. Honestly, yeah, it's it's definitely after the Manchester United game, I was just so hopeful things would change. But it's just shocking. Like today is just disheartening. I'm not even angry anymore. It's like I said before coming on to the stream, I kind of expected it by the way the game was going and just could see holes in our defence and I just at the at the 70th minute when uh, Modrieka scored I, I told my dad no oh, they're gonna concede another one. Um it's just really disappointing from from Chelsea as a as a football club. It's really embarrassing to 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 draw against the bottom of the league. Like you said, they've shipped almost what, eighty one goals in the season, which yeah. is embarrassing um alone. Like you guys, the Manchester United game really gave me so much hope, and I thought that was going to kickstart some kind of momentum to at least get Europe. And you know, I was I was actually on the plane when that happened. I was just so shocked when um, when I uh, found out that we scored two goals in like two minutes. And as as a fan base, we were just it just brought us all together. And look at look at this; it just disheartens. <laughs> completely and just um, throws away all the hope that we had after that game and it just kind of kills the joy of that game as well and yeah. now it's just I don't know where to go forward with this and with with, with the lineup I was, I was hopeful that with Thiago uh, the defence will, will at least get better but he, it's, it, it didn't help so yeah. So, Honestly, before the game, I was being like, oh, Thiago Silva is back. Watch us get a clean sheet today. Well, <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. I, I, there's this meme that, that's been going around that I didn't have time to, to, to crop it now, but this is, I'm not sure if it's even big enough for you guys to actually read it now, but essentially at the bottom, it says all day, you're excited to like watch your game. Then during the game, you're like, I want to kill myself. And then at the end, it's like, yeah, we won. Except the last bit didn't even happen today because we're fucking pathetic. And it just pisses me off. Like, honestly, watching Chelsea makes me miserable these days. Like, even the Man United game, other than those last two minutes and the first 19 minutes, I was fucking miserable throughout that game as well. Oh, my days. Oh, it's just... Petrovic, why Why have you now all of a sudden turned shit as well? Even though he still <laughs> made two really strong saves today, I felt. Again, a mistake. Third game in a row where I felt he made a mistake. That, that It can't be happening. But what does that tell us about a fucking recruitment? <laughs> oh, do you know what I mean? Like, Petrovic is a backup goalkeeper. Is fine. It's not like it's okay that he makes mistakes. He's supposed to be the backup goalkeeper. The problem is that the first choice goalkeeper is a fucking shit that he's better. That's the problem in it of itself, isn't it? But 
Thiago Silva don't help today. We play some weird ass three back. That's not really a three back. Cucurella left wing backs, brilliant. Maruweke right wing back, amazing. Conor Gallagher basically doing what Mason Mount did under 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 Thomas Tuchel, just badly. Oh my God, Gusto was rested because he was ill and injured. So we obviously had no full backs. Oh my days. <laughs> I've, I've so lost all hope, man. I can't even put it into words. I've put it up as this now. In reality, this is not really what it was. Off the ball, maybe, if you really want to... I don't know. I mean, off the ball is probably more likely was a bit more one of these, right? If I'm honest. But, yeah. Um, it, it doesn't even matter. Like, why am, I, why am I trying to like think about, oh, what did Poch really come up with today? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No matter what he comes out with, it's shocking. It's shocking. The man can't coach. The man can't manage. Ugh, what can he do? What can he do? So I'll get your guys' thoughts in a second, whether you also felt that for the most part, this is kind of how we were setting up. But would you kind of agree with this, that it was weirdly almost a 3-4-3 that had a very attacking right wing back and a not as attacking left wing back? Or did you see it differently? Uh, yeah, I saw it like that. I think Dzanzi was maybe, you know, a bit more, it was like a three back, but he was, you know, a bit more toward the touchline, more than, you know, we would have under uh, Tuchel. But I also saw it like this. Uh, and I think the, the the thing is sometimes you just have to play with the players you have. But I think you could really see today the, you know, we, we, we kind of, we needed our right back in a sense. You could see we, we missed Gusto. And we missed Reese James as well because okay. the best games we've played this season have been with two, you know, fullbacks who are able to attack both of them. Um, and I understand, you know, Gusto can't play every game, seeing as he's injured as well. But I just think it's super important, especially for you know the way Podge plays, to have his two fullbacks. Uh, and I don't think this really worked today. And I don't think playing a three-back has worked, you know, consistently for him this season at all. Um, yeah. But I think this is, you know, more or less the way we played with. Uh, with Jackson perhaps sometimes going out to the left and Palmer sometimes moving up. Uh, yeah, that is fine. I mean, yeah, it's maybe a case to be made that it was one of these, like a 3-5-2 in that sense, almost. Maybe you could make that argument. But pa Gallagher was very often off in the half-left space. That is, therefore, I more see it a bit more like this. And actually, did, did you also feel that this is kind of how we were shaped up in possession mostly? Yeah, I'm in agreement with you guys. It was almost like a 3-4-0. Three four three and um, Cucurella was really high up and Mudweka was uh, weirdly very deep and Disassi was playing as alongside um, Thiago, um, so it's I definitely am in agreement with that and it just shows how inept uh, Pochettino was because I don't think he meant that if I'm being honest I think he actually meant a four four two three one but it's almost like uh midwaker was dropping deep I, I don't think he actually made this formation that's how low i think of pochettino i actually think is a is a is a case where uh Mudueke was just dropping deep whereas he really meant a four two three one with gallagher like almost sitting behind jackson palmer on the right and almost almost gallagher almost roaming between the um, central and the left wing side of things i don't know if you yeah, no, I do agree. It's a very interesting take that you don't think Poch meant it. I, I see where you're coming from. Mm. But at the same time, I'm like, I mean, I don't rate and like Poch anyway. And if he didn't mean it, and it ended up like this for the whole game anyway, I mean, that, that is just... I will give him this benefit of the doubt. But you're trying to say something, good. I was just thinking, I usually when we do these things... We can. We all have, you know, a pretty solid idea about how, you know, defensively and offensively we shape. You know, we we have a solid idea of where the players are, and I think for you know the defenders today, we're all in agreement that, you know, it did look like a three back, especially in build up. But if I'm honest, I watched the whole game. I can't properly tell you what our attacking formation was. No, and it didn't really seem for there to be a plan in a way. Exactly. I think that, and the thing is, sometimes that can be a good thing, you know, being fluid. But it just either seems like he hasn't, you know, made a tactic. His tactic is just give Palmer the ball. You others just run around for a bit. But I just didn't but really see him attacking the today as well. Palmer off. <laughs> I mean, I know we were leading at that point, but even still. 
Exactly. And sometimes that's the best form of defense as well. Having someone who can, uh, you know, someone who Sheffield United have to deal with offensively so they can't push as many forward. Um, but I think it might just be me, but I think there isn't a clear attacking plan. Uh, and I think that was evident today and is one of the reasons why they dominated us so much because we didn't offer that much, you know, even even like a Mudrick from the start, we didn't offer anything in behind, which meant they could push further up. Yeah. Spot on. Absolutely spot on. I, I know I already brought the lineup up and I'm we're discuss- and I'm going to ask you about your general thoughts in the lineup as well. But then I do want to take a little look at a few at some stats before we actually get into talking about all the individual player ratings. But Neshi, what did you make of the team when it came out? I think initially we all first of all thought that Chalaba was playing right back um, and Thiago Silva and Desazza will be the centre backs, Cucurella left back. Then it turned out Desazza wasn't right and then we realised actually it's kind of more of a three and then Cucurella is a left wing back and Madueke seems to be dropping so deep that he's kind of a right wing back, but it also kind of he had to because Palmer was still moving off the right. So that meant Madueke can't just be a right wing if Palmer's on the right. So, it, you know, then it's something needs to give. And also realize that Gallagher was still on the half left area, which is my question in the first place. Like I understand that Madueke arguably deserved to play after the way he won us the United game indirectly by winning the penalty initially um, because that gave us that, that spark, right, to, to, to go win it in the end as well. Um, and also a little bit of rotation, I understand. But why you... I mean, I even understand wanting to keep playing Palmer. But just play Palmer as the 10, Maduweke on the right, and even if you don't want to play Mudrik because you th- you're saying, okay, he's already played two games in a row, started two games in a row, go with Sterling. Like, I don't like Sterling. I, I, I'm not a fan of Sterling playing. But Sterling all season, pretty much, has always started, no matter what happened. And now we're in a position where the other left winger needs a rest, but you're not playing Sterling. What the fuck? Like, it makes the whole rest of the season an even bigger waste that you gave him so many opportunities over Mudrik, who could have already been a better player now if you just gave him more game time since bloody October until a month ago, if that, right? I just... That, that was my biggest question. It's not like I hated it. I like understood Gusto needing a rest. I even understood, I even fully expected Mudrik not to start and him saying, ah, oh, you know, he needs a rest. He started the last two games in a row. To be honest, I thought Caicedo would, would be left out today because of the, the yellow card situation. If he got booked today, it would have been suspended for two games, which not only would be Everton on the uh, next week, but also Arsenal after that. But um, that didn't happen. Um, I thought Chukwameka may start. In the end, I, I give Podge the benefit of the doubt. Maybe Chukwameka isn't fit to start yet because we can't forget he was injured, then came back, then got injured again, then came back. You don't want to overdo it. And we can't complain about injuries all season, but then moan when a player is not rushed back. Like we're, we're, As fans, we're not in a position to complain when a manager is like, okay, I'm going to be careful with someone that's coming back from an injury. I don't think we're in a position to complain about that. But why he chose to play Madueke and Palmer both kind of on the right-hand side, I, I just... I mean, sure, the lack of a right back... I. I guess, but what were your thoughts when you saw the team, Nishi? Yeah, I'm in complete agreement with what you said. I would have just kept the same team as United and the same shape at bar, obviously, um, Thiago coming in for Bada Shield because Bada Shield was just, he's been off it lately and he, yeah. he needed to be taken out. And then, obviously, um, Gusto for Chalaba, I would have played Chalaba on the right instead of De Sassi on the right because I feel like Chalaba's got that flexibility and he's more versatile and he's got that that um, athletic attributes to kind of go up and down uh, the pitch whereas De Sassi is, is a bit is a bit stiff and I don't, I don't think he's not as mobile as Chalaba so that's what I would have gone for so I was really surprised he went with De Sassi on the right which just Really, it's frustrating and it shows why Pochettino is not the right uh, man for this team. Um, and also, like you said, with um, Gallagher, um, sorry, I would have, if you're going to start Modueke, yes, put Palmer in the central position. And then if you want to give Modu- Gallagher on the bench, we we're playing the bottom team in the league. You didn't need Gallagher. Exactly. That's that. You should go all attack, really. And if you um, want to, like you said, rotate Modric, you can rotate him with Sterling. It would have been a shape and it would have at least kept the same um, kind of momentum in, in, from the game, from the previous game. And I feel like he's tinkering too much and all, with, with the team, which, which we really don't need. We need continuity and we need some kind of... Um, 
kind of continuity in terms of the shape, in terms of the personnel. So he's just... Do you he's think, not... just, just, to, just to jump in there to like further explain all of our thoughts, because Gusto obviously wasn't able to play, then obviously, even if you keep the same shape, if you then play a centre-back at right-back, doesn't that inadvertently change what we're doing anyway? You know, like I understand what you're saying, keep the shape, keep this, keep that. But when you don't have a right back all of a sudden, while you're used to having a right back, then that, and especially Gusto was the main attacking right back, and then you change to a centre back there, that changes everything we do anyway. Did you, mm. you see that point a little bit though? Yeah, I get your point. But where I'm coming from is, is the fact that, okay, Gusto's not in the team, and we can't help that. Um, the best person to kind of replace that, kind of, that missing element is Chalabar at the moment. And I felt like he should have just done that and just keep things simple. And he's just complicated things, which is why the shape was was confusing to us. Like like I said, I really don't think he meant this shape. I honestly yeah. don't meant this three shape. He, he meant four at the back. And I, I'm, I'm sure of it in previous interviews. He's always been stubborn with that kind of formation, really. I think there's only a few occasions where he's he has actually gone with the three at the back. Um, yeah. So he's just complicating things, like I said. Just keep it simple, keep the same shape, and you know, rest players that need to be rested. It's an interesting yeah. one. When I I'm gonna get it up on screen in a second. I've just looked at it on Sofa Score, and I'm gonna airdrop it to myself and then bring it up on screen. I've just looked at the average positions um, from Sofa Score, and it's it's actually quite an interesting one. Maybe it's a bit. Maybe I need to adapt it ever so slightly. I'll get your thoughts on it, obviously, in a second. It's always a bit difficult when certain players stay on the pitch and then we make subs and then these players kind of change positions. That makes it then a bit difficult in the average position stuff to like really, truly see what they're doing and, and why they're doing something. Um, oh, always like full storage <laughs> in these pictures that I can't upload. Right, where is it? Upload then. There you go. So now you can see it. So three is obviously Cucurella, 11 is Madueke. And then you can almost see a, a kind of a midfield three. But how is Enzo even deeper than Caicedo? I mean, I know Caicedo was up quite a lot, but but still Enzo was up quite a lot. Like, uh, and the, the whole thing that Palm is higher than Jackson anyway. Uh, I mean, when you see it like this, there's even a small argument to be made that it's almost like a, a 4-3-3. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like that it's almost like, you know, obviously it was directly like that, but you can eat like from that average average position, you could even say it looked a bit like this shape as well, which is like we haven't played that either this season. Like what why? Why what are you doing, Pochettino? Why? I, I just uh, I just do not understand. But um, what were your thoughts when you saw the lineup? Um especially with Marueke and Palmer. I, I personally thought that Palmer would be playing full sign and Jackson left wing when I because I was like, how are you going to play Marueke and Palmer if you keep Gallagher in the team? <laughs> yeah, y your thoughts? And like I say, why why do you need to play Gallagher against Sheffield United anyway? Like, Gallagher plays every game anyway. Surely this is one of the few games where it would make somewhat sense to rest him, drop him, whatever word you want to use. Well, I think it made sense at the start of the game because we pressed quite high. Because uh, in a way, it seemed like we kind of let them have possession. So, so that way it made sense. But I think as well, you were talking before about continuity. I think Gallagher, you know, is a part of that. Um, the, him being our captain and him, you know, consistently being in our starting 11 as well. You know, him really keeping that midfield trio, if you'd call it that together. You know, trying to introduce this consistency. Um, but I think when I saw the lineup, I was, you know, relatively... You know, happy about it. I think I was happy to see Madueke get a start. Mm. I thought he uh, he had a very good cameo against United, and I thought today he was quite decent as well. I think he does something, especially against these low blocks, um, which you know we don't have many other people, especially when we don't start Mudrick, uh, who's able to do. You know, we saw the move he, that he he did against United to win the pen. We saw him, you know, round uh, the full bag many times today to uh, yeah. to at least create a chance. And he the the goal he scored he perhaps I think he did that move like three times before almost the exact it was the same end you know second half and he did it three times one of them came off you know decent success rate so I was happy to see Madweke start um I like you thought that maybe we'd see Jackson uh on left wing and I thought he you know, we'll get into him later but uh I thought he was quite anonymous today I think he didn't really uh you know 
live up to what we had hoped. But I think as the game progressed, I said before that Gallagher, you know, maybe it made sense if we wanted to press them high. I think as the game progressed and it became more technical, I think he just got in the way more, perhaps, you know, when we're building up. Uh, so I think that was quite sad to see. I think if I would have uh, subbed someone off earlier, it might have been him. Uh, but other than that, I think, you know, given the situation we're in, you know, having to rest a player like uh, like Gusto, I think this is pretty much the best thing you could have done. Uh, perhaps if you'd want to tinker with it, you know, Dezazi has played right back. You could have played Trev right back if you wanted to, but I think that's just, you know, small things. It might not have changed anything. Uh, so I think given the circumstances we're in, I think this is the best thing we could have done. In a way, I might not rate him as highly. I still think it sometimes makes sense to start with Gallagher. Um, we don't know what would have happened if we played Sterling. We know he's been abysmal this season. So I think given the situation we're in, this is as close to a good but, lineup. But at least it would have kept it closer to what we've been doing over the last few weeks. And other than Burnley, we've actually been on a pretty good run. Like in terms of at least results. Yeah, so, so, so why move away from it as drastically as it did today? That's just the part I don't understand. Like if we were being terrible and losing every game for weeks now, I'd understand this quite drastic change. But in think, the last game, he said he wants about continuity, right? He started the exact same 11 against Man United as started against Burnley. And obviously, we touched on it because of fatigue, injuries, this and that, and also rotation to keep other players happy. Some change was absolutely fine today. But why change almost the base of the system? I just I just don't understand the, 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 the logical thought behind it. I just, but I think just that, that's down to the fact that we, 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 we missed our right back, to be honest. I think that's where it is. But and we've played plenty of games this season without a right back or without a left back. And we still played a 4-2-3-1. But we didn't play well. It's not like we no, played no, you true, know, true, really but... well when we've done that. Uh, the thing you could criticize Podge for is you could criticize him for not being you know, brave enough, in a sense, to maybe start, uh, what's his name, Achimpong from the academy? He's a right back, I think. Tall guy. I think he's a left back, actually, but I, maybe he can play both, mate. Honestly, maybe play I, you, I used to be quite good with the academy, but these owners have just killed me because the academy has no relevance now. The, the, the more I watch the academy, the more I will attach to these players and then they will sell them and I will cry. So now I just don't watch and attach to these anymore because they will always sell for profit anyway. So, um, but I think the thing, the thing you, you saw, you see how it's gone with Klopp. You know, he's played that Connor Bradley kid. Even yeah. with, uh, with United, they've played, uh, they played today. They played some some uh, some guy. I, I can't remember. It starts with a K, something like that. I don't. I don't even think he's a defender. But I'm just saying the fact that, you know, we as fans from right now, I I, I don't watch any academy games. Maybe you guys do, but I'm just thinking, if the other clubs can do it, you know, maybe maybe this Bradley guy from Liverpool, maybe he's generational. We don't know that. Maybe that guy, he's not ready. But I still think, if Poch had used some of the games, maybe to introduce some of these academy players who are playing in their natural position, you know, introduced a right back. So when Gusto needs a rest, we don't have to change the system. Yeah. Bro, I, I think, think that would make sense. How many games in the cup did we have this season against lower league opposition? How many opportunities were there to do exactly what you just said? There were so many, and he just always played fucking Disazia right back or fucking and Chilwell. And you can't tell me against... Chilwell in unnecessary games to keep him exactly. in. Exactly. And if we played against, you know, a Burnley, for example, at home, you can... I, I, I struggle. I, I I see. You know, Gusto has been one of our best players, so I can't knock him for starting him. But I'm just saying, some of those games, like like today, for example, it would have been so smart for us to go out, steamroll them, get three nil up, two nil up, and introduce some of these players, or you know, do it against Burnley, because I don't think it would have made you know as drastic a difference. We drew both games. The problem I, is I, we I can't steamroll anyone. <laughs> exactly, but that's what you that's what you're hoping to see, you know, yeah. from from the team. Um, but I think that's that's kind of a thing you can level at Poch, but that also goes deeper. It's not just about today. It's about the whole season, about you know playing against Wimbledon with a very strong side or playing against Leeds or Leicester with a very, very strong side. Mm. It just makes us, you know, it, it just it limits our squad and it limits our tactical possibilities. But if that's how he wanted to do it, well, it got us through to the Cups, so... <laughs> brilliant <laughs> only to lose a cup final i was being extra miserable <laughs> amazing <laughs> I, I get what you're saying though like, I, I understand and, and and you're not wrong either um i don't know what shape to put it, this whole mess on screen today it doesn't really matter we're going to talk through them individually anyway before that i want to highlight well one tweet by pice um and then there's a couple of others that i want to highlight as well 
just what we touched on first. Sheffield United were more duels, more shots on goal, more big chances created, more shots inside the box, as well as more XG. And then Pai says today was true, the true unacceptable result, bottom of the league and producing that garbage after a massive result. And I think what makes it even worse, and obviously there was that United game in between, but if you take that out of it, we played back-to-back against the two bottom sides of the Premier League and we couldn't beat either of them. Like that, that is simply disgraceful. I don't care. It doesn't matter whether you're 10th or 11th or 6th or fighting for the title. That's a disgrace. <laughs> like, and, and, and then, and that's what I meant earlier when I said I've given us these excuses, lack of experience and this bollocks and that bollocks. You know what I mean, but we're, we're talking the two worst teams in the league. And I know the Premier League is of a general, very high level, but even still, man, like, who are we? What are we? <laughs> like, uh, and I, I'm gonna want to bring up two quotes by Poch as well. The Pies but, posted which because it's just Lawrence. Like, you, you can't you can't forget if we uh, Poch. You know he 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 planned the season out with having in Kunku and Lavia. You, you so how how can you blame him? You know planned the whole season out. Maybe we'd have beaten them with them. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but hey, I think their Kunku hype was way too much anyway. Even in preseason, he scored, but they were tappings, and otherwise he kind of stood in the way. <laughs> like if we did if we did what Poch did in the preseason and played on Kunku left wing all season, especially with the left-back problems that we've had, well, that would have been a nightmare as well, even if you could play. So um, e- even that I can't say. But Poch saying, a lot of big players look tired today. We struggle to compete against these types of teams. Okay, Poch. This is why you should have rested some of them players. But what do you do? You keep playing Gallagher. You keep playing Caicedo. You keep playing Enzo. Like, yeah, obviously they're going to be tired because you play them every game. You have Kazanai there, who would have also given us some physicality to help us against the type of opponent that the Sheffield United is. And you can say Kazanai is nowhere near good enough. Maybe he isn't. But they still recalled him and loaned out Santos. Santos doing a decent job at Strasbourg when he's getting minutes. If you didn't loan out, you could have just kept Santos and played him. Would have been fine too. But no, you instead prefer to play Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez every single game. And then are surprised that they're tired. What a shock. What a shock. And what are you even talking about? Tired. The problem is that we can't control a game of football. We we pass the ball around loads in the first half today, but as soon as as soon as we get high up the pitch, we lose every bit of structure. Everyone pushes up, and then you have three rest defenders, no midfield, and then whenever they counter, they're immediately facing against either Cucurella or the back three. Immediately, every single time. And then we're just sprinting back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. But do you not understand that the injuries and the tiredness is because of your football? Because you play basketball instead of football on a football pitch. Like, oh, I, 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 when I read this, I'm like, bro, he sits there and he's like, yeah, couldn't do anything. The players looked a bit tired. We struggled to compete against these teams. But why? Why? Why haven't you done anything about it? Oh, my days. And then this one. Points dropped this season. Against Sheffield United? Two. So it's not that bad. Against Burnley, two. Again, these are the two bottom teams in the Premier League. Wolves beat us home and away. Disgrace. At Brentford, we got one draw, and that was lucky as well. Um, and obviously lost to them the other game at home. Everton, lost to them as well. But don't worry. It's not because we beat them the other time. It's because we haven't played them a second time yet. So who knows? It might be five. It might be six come come next Monday because that's our next game. Forest three, Bournemouth two points as well. I don't think... Did we play Bournemouth a second time? No, Bournemouth their last game of the season. So we haven't played those for a second time yet either. Oh, <laughs> honestly, I'm just so sad. <laughs> I'm just so sad. Um, Neshi, we're, we're, on, on today, on, on these kind of points, what... what is there even a thought in your head anymore? Okay, this is why these things are happening. Or is it just gotten way too much and you're like, there isn't even an explanation anymore? Or do you still have an explanation? No, um, on, on the injuries, I'm actually thinking, as you as you just touched on there, which is a, a very interesting point about the football that we're playing is contributing to these injuries. As you said, in, in the Man United game, we were literally going up and down for 90 minutes. Of course, you're going to... Um, get injuries from that kind of football. It's if you notice with with the big teams, there's points in the game where they literally just control the game, and at that at point where they're just controlling the game, their main objective is to just get a handle off the game and before attacking. It feels like with Chelsea, they're just trying to go on 100 miles per hour, just trying to get a, on a counter attack, and which is why there's um, um, injuries happening and. 
And it's also why we concede so many late goals. It's why we concede so many second half goals because the the longer in each game you do this kind of high intensity football, the more tired you'll be as the game goes on. So that's why you're more likely to make um, concentration errors. That's why you're more likely to make simple errors. That's why you're more likely to just get overrun or whatever. Like, uh, it, it's a disgrace. And what I see on screen, obviously, the, these points combined here equals to 23 points. And now people are like, okay, how many points do we have? If you add 23 to it, that's 67, which would actually put us in the top four. Now, it's not as simple as, okay, if we would have beat these teams, then we'd be in the top four. The way, Where we are, I wouldn't have expected us to win every game against all of these teams. Should Sheffield United and Burnley, yes. The others, not necessarily, right? But this is what hits the nail on the head. Remember when Poch a couple of days ago said the data says we should be fourth? This is what he's talking about. So every time, Poch, so you say post-game, we still struggle against these teams, but you still then say the data says we're fourth. Yeah, no. No, because the data that's suggesting that is us having, other than today, mostly ever so slightly more XG than in those games where we drop points. But that's not us, the data saying we should be fourth. That's the data saying we can't beat bad teams because we can only counterattack, and when we can't do that successfully, we are screwed. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That, that's essentially what it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. But um, I, I'll ask you a similar question to, to what I put to Neji. When I Do you still have an explanation? Obviously, obviously, right? When I ask that question, I'm aware it's obviously um, loads and loads of separate factors that all combine into what we've experienced this season. I'm aware of that. <laughs> but as in a main issue or a main explanation, do you still have it? Because honestly, I'm running out. Like, I'm seriously running out. Other than owners, but, you know, it's a bit simple. Though. Well, the thing is, generally, uh, I think with a squad, like this makeup of squad, you can just see uh, the inconsistency. It's just a general thing for us. So I don't think – I just think having a squad makeup of so many young players is what's costing us now. I think even, uh, you know, under the bad seasons we've had under, you know, our second season under Conte or, you know – even some people didn't like sorry season or even, you know, Tuchel or, La or Lampard. The thing is when you have older experienced players, they just, you know, some, you're just better at getting results and you're just better at grinding out some results. I think you could look at, you know, even Brighton, for example, this season, Brighton last season, fantastic team, you know, almost got top four, uh, qualified for Europe. If you look at the squad from last season, it was, I think it was a bit older than it is now. And that's just part of it. They're, they're I think having the younger midfielders and the centre back, obviously they're going to be worse. Exactly, exactly. But I still think think that sometimes when you just lose these experienced players, you also lose a bit of the consistency. And you know we fill our squad with these younger players, so it's just bound to give them consistency. But I think the fact that we're playing against, you know, it's happening against these teams. I also think you know some of the games we might easily have been rattled. If you look at Everton, for example, I think Goodison got the better of us. Uh, I think maybe perhaps even against like the likes of Wolves, for example, mm -hmm. they got the better of us. And it's just, you know, it's a, t it's a tale as old as time. You know, Chelsea against low blocks, we haven't been good. You look at Brentford earlier this season, you look at Nottingham Forest. I think a lot of those points as well, we had a quite easy run. I think they were down to the fact that we hadn't, you know, found our system yet. I think if we played those those uh, games at the start of the season, if we played, you know, those opponents around January, maybe even December, February time, I think we might have won some of those games. Um, you know, back then when we were playing around with the chill while left wing uh, nonsense. So I think in a way it's both down to the fact that we are an inconsistent side. We hadn't found out what kind of team we were then. Arguably we haven't done it now, but I think we're still more settled than we were then. Um, but I just in general think it is going to be like this. It's going to be like this next season as well. Hopefully gradually, you know, less uh but until these players have played together until they mature until you know they just get older I, I think or until our squad makeup is you know of older players i think this is something we're gonna see um but, but it's, 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 while i agree with with pretty much every word you've said there isn't isn't this a bit too easy to use that for these types of games against sheffield united against bandy like in the grand scheme of things you're obviously spot on right but when you deep the fact to quite how bad sheffield united are if, the, if these players are as good as they are, that, that should be enough. That should be enough to trump maybe the ever... And, and also, what let's not forget, Sheffield United are one of only two teams that have actually been hit with even worse injury problems than Chelsea have. Like, Sheffield United and Newcastle are the only two teams that have had more days injured of their, in their squad, of all players combined, than we have. Like, 
I don't know, like, uh, I'm not sure if I can, if I go to line up here, right? Let me find it. Where is it? I'm usually, what, what does it say, the, the whole substitutes thing here? But I, I think, the, but, but as you touched upon. The injured players that they have. <laughs> but I think as you've, as you've touched upon as well, it is so grotesque in a way because we are so much, we are better. You can argue that, but you know, we should be so much better than this team. Um, and I think the only explanation you could find is that because, you know, all these players individually, you know, classes above one of the, you know, probably a top four, top five side in the league. If you look at them individually, I just think some of that inconsistency uh, that they get, I think if you look at, you know, if you look at the Sheffield United team, it's filled, you know, Ollie McBurney up front, um, even Akin Hudson behind, you know, they experienced players and, you know, yeah, you fill in with some young players, you fill in with some uh, some lesser players because of their injuries. I still think it just, it makes that team relatively solid. And it's not every game because we've seen them lose, you know, five and six nil, eight nil even at home. Even against Burnley, they lost five nil. Exactly. But I think, I just think the only, the only fle- feasible explanation is the fact that we have so many young players and that's why we're inconsistent. That's the only thing I can think of yeah. because... No, no, obviously, that that is, in a way, it is the only explanation. But, ay yeah, yeah. Uh, some more quotes by Poch. The process always takes time. It's not a magic thing. It's a project. A three or five year process to build a team. The question I have, Poch, you do realize you only signed a two year contract, right? <laughs> so what the fuck was your expectation? At 52 years old, you identify really quick whether the team is ready to compete or not. Maybe this group is not mature enough to compete in, in, in games every three days. So were you only 51 in the summer when you said we're ready to compete now or what happened? Because you did say that in the summer. Now, I know you were, he was only saying that to appease the fans because he realized what Potter did wrong, right? But even still, you make it just make yourself look like a clown. A couple of days ago, you were sat there saying, you are not a clown. If we want to look for a clown, go find one. Well, we already did. That's the problem. <laughs> that is the problem. That we are owned by clowns, directed by clowns, and managed by clowns. And some of these players are also clowns. And that's why we are a circus that's missing a few actual animals. You know, if we had a couple of fucking lions about, that would help. Do you know what I mean? But no, just clowns. Clowns fucking everywhere. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's hey, let's just get into these player ratings. Let's get it over and done with. Um, uh, sorry, Nation, I'll start with Bertram again because he is a goalkeeper um, or plays as a goalkeeper in his... Um, Local team. I'm just. It's not really your local team. Just, just where you play football. Anyway. I'm not going. We'll go with it. We'll go with it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um, <laughs> thoughts on Petrovic on today in terms of rating, but also the fact that he kind of made three errors in the last three games. Now, I guess maybe for United, it's a bit debatable. When I was talking to Pais about it, he he felt Petrovic was more at fault for the for the Bruno Fernandez header, while I felt what was he doing for the third goal from the cross because he was right there, but then. Still stood off too much. Like, what is he doing? Um, regardless, um, today was clearly an error because he was speculating for the cross. The player read it and shot, and then he looked like a moron. And obviously, against Burnley, he tried to catch the ball and didn't and went in his own net. Um, so yeah, uh, thoughts so, so thought on Petrovic with obviously those three mistakes, or whether you maybe you don't think against United, you made a mistake, and also in terms of rating today, bro. Well, I think no doubt about it. I think last three games he has made three mistakes. I think Burnley, also the reason I'm not as hard on our performance against Burnley is we lost or we drew because of that. You know, clear mistake, clear mistake. Every Everyone can see that. And that's just unfortunate. It happens. I think against United, I think the Garnacho one was a mistake as well. Uh, but that's because, you know, some goalkeepers are different. In another world, he comes out, he fills the goal, he saves it. The way I see it is the ball was going past. So it's not as if, you know, Garnacho could have taken a touch and been wide through. Um, so I think that was a mistake, or at least I think my, my thinking, and you tell that. me if, if you if you would have thought it differently, but my thinking was because he came out for it already. If he just comes like with proper intention, then he can actually, in my opinion, intercept the cross before it gets to Ganacha. If he comes out, and if you're not co- like because that to me, if you're coming out, that's what you have to do. Now, sure, maybe he didn't expect it to bounce and then Ganacha to head to like use his head to do something because with his head, it's higher up. The goalkeeper can't exactly make himself very big because the ball's above where he can make himself big. But even still, then it's either misjudgment of the crossing it of itself or for me, if you come out, go for it or stay a bit deeper to... I'm not saying then he can save it. 
But then at least he's not made a fool of himself because then he gives himself a chance of Garnacho hitting it straight at him at least if he stays. Yeah, I think the thing is, I think it he couldn't he couldn't have intercepted the cross. I think I think it was quite far out. If if the cross had been in a way where you know he'd have control of the ball and he could you know t- take a touch and be you know right in front of the goal, I think it's fair enough to come out. The thing is, if you think about it, if you rush out as a goalkeeper as he did there. It's Garnacho doesn't have to doesn't doesn't have to make a good shot. You know, it doesn't it doesn't have to be a good header to get to go past him because it wasn't a good or a powerful header. If he'd stayed in the goal, he'd had much you know long, for, you know a longer reaction time, which meant the shot or header from Garnacho would have had to been quite good to to get past him. Right. And some goalkeepers, you know, I think the likes of Allison are very good at you know not always rushing out, sometimes staying in because they know that the quality of the shot has to be really good to get past them right. if they're on the line. Um, but, you know, coming back to just Petrovic in general, I think today was a mistake as well. I think he tried to be smart and read, you know, kind of uh, cheat uh, to the cross. And Bolo saw it. And it was very, uh, very good from their uh, from their right wing back. So I think that was a mistake. And I think it is worrying because he has made one mistake. You always look for the reaction. His reaction to one mistake has been another and another. Uh, so you'd hope it stops. I still think he made some good saves today. Um, and I'm really not liking the revisionism because we've all said he's been a very good signing and he hasn't been a very good signing. He's been super solid before that Burnley game. Uh, that being said, today, he does cost us. It is a mistake, in my opinion. Um, I'd probably give him a 4.5. I know he'll be he'll be the most annoyed. He'll, uh, he'll rake himself harshly as well, despite the good saves. I also, to be fair, would maybe consider dropping him in fairness. I think the he's a better goalkeeper than Sanchez. Sanchez isn't fit. Well, that is that is an issue. Maybe. Well, I suppose we have eight days, so yeah. we can see if he's yeah, back. Yeah, no, he, he was. He's supposedly back in team training, but was not in the squad now against United all today. So maybe he's I, back for the next one. But, but I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't like. I wouldn't take Bettinelli instead. I. No, uh, I no, think, no, that's my point. That's my point. Exactly. I think he's a good goalkeeper, and I think people are being harsh. Uh, I think he will. You know prove himself again we also forget he's a young goalkeeper this is his first big move uh that being said he does cost us today he has cost us the other games uh so for today i give him a 4.5 fair there is an issue um petrovic the the ever today um he did make some good saves there was one low to his left that he saved well arguably should have held on to it but it didn't matter <clears throat> and then obviously the one at the very end where he like grabs over himself that he just about stops from dropping in behind him that was a really really good save but, uh, yeah, I mean, give, give me your rating first and foremost for him today. I said it at the beginning. Petrovic in itself not being better than he maybe seems after these three errors, these three games, isn't really the problem. He is the backup goalkeeper. The problem is that the other goalkeeper isn't any better, really. that That's kind of the main crux of it. The problem is we bought two goalkeepers who are roughly as good as each other, seemingly. One is better with his feet. The other one is a better shot stopper and a bit more safe but both have issues and neither of them are anywhere near good enough for what Chelsea want to be, at least with like Enzo and Gusto and Palmer. And, you know, maybe you could even argue like Mudrig or Caicedo and these lot, Kakowal. We have some of the best young players in their positions, but a goalkeeper, we seem to have not thought that was important. And it's just so weird to me, like a centre-back to be fair as well. Now we have Colwell, but all the ones we signed are average. So, like, I just find it weird how in some positions we're like, we need to get the best in the world that are young. And at some, we just need to get some that are young, <laughs> not the best in the world anymore. It's just, it's just so weird to me, man. But, yeah, um, your thoughts on Petrovic today and also what you would be doing going forward. Yeah, it was, uh, it's really disappointing because um, when when Petrovic um, came into the team, I was so, I was so happy and he, he showed a lot of uh, maturity and uh, stability uh, in that position. And I really had high hopes for him, but these past three games, he's consistently making mistakes and they're not the really big mistakes and it comes with the position really. But especially that Burnley one, I, I think he could have caught it. Um, that was a really I think bad... he was trying to catch it. That was ha- kind of half the problem. <laughs> Yeah, and that cost us two points in, at the end of the day. And this this mistake today is cost us another two points. is is essentially cost us um, four points, which is really concerning. And I think he needs to just come out of the team. And unfortunately, as you guys mentioned, um, Sanchez is injured, which is a bit of a, it is a massive issue as well. So, and he just kind of 
uh, goes back to the recruitment, like such a, a poor recruitment that we've got average keepers. And to to be honest with you, we, um, as you said, one's really good in terms of uh, distribution, which is Petrovic, and Sa Sanchez is a better shot stopper. And I think maybe Sanchez ante anticipates those kind of situations where mm -hmm. whether to come out or not to come out. Like in that in that uh, situation with um, uh, Ganacho and the Man United game, I feel like there was a split hesitance um, uh, in in that moment. If he was fully committed, I feel like he could have got a hand to that ball before Ganacho. Uh, that's my personal opinion on that. But yeah, I, I'm gonna really go harsh on him if I'm being honest. I'll give him a three point five because that mistake. If he just stays in his box and, and not anticipate that uh, that ball coming across from that Sheffield United player, that would have been an easy save, but he, he tried to be smart and anticipate the cross. It's and difficult, isn't it? I don't want to defend him too much, but the thing is, I it felt to me like the, the attacker, I can't remember his name, um, Bolge, is it? Whatever it was. Um, Bogle. Bogle, yeah. Um, noticed that Petrovic was speculating for the cross. So had he not been speculating for the cross, would he even have shot? Or would he then have crossed and would it have been a simple tapping and a goal anyway? Do you know what I mean? Like there, there is that case where, because the rest defense was shocking. Like if he made played a good cross, it would have been a tapping. Now sure, there's still the potential that the guy skies it somehow and misses from three yards out. But that's the only let off in my head for him because I'm like, the situation that it was, he knows if that cross goes in the middle, it's a goal anyway. And I kind of have to just say almost fair play to like Bogle for spotting what Petrovic is doing and going for the goal. Because if he does cross it, Petrovic collects it and we actually all praise him for good anticipation. So I, I don't know if that influences any of your rating, if you guys have had that same thought. But yeah, um, I, I, yeah. Don't know, I just thought I'd bring it up. Yeah, I get, I, get, I get your point. But on the back of making so many mistakes, I feel like it's things simple. Like if if you you just go back when going back on if you have bad performances in the previous game, you just go back to the basics really, and you should be really going back to how how we kind of introduce himself into the team, just doing the basics and keeping things simple. Even with the that situation when Thiago passed it to him, he um, we that almost we almost conceded with that. So he kind of hesitated and he went back on uh, onto his line. That's another situation that could have cost us a, a goal. And I blame Petrovic for that more than Thiago, if I'm being honest, because Thiago gave him that kind of look like, um, I'm going to pass it to you before he, he attempted that pass. So, yeah. Do you think I, he aimed it for Petrovic, that pass? I, I, To be honest, I thought he blind passed it and thought that would be Dizazi or someone would be there, to be honest. But maybe you have a good point, honestly. Maybe. But Petrovic did quite well there, in my opinion, to be fair. I actually He's agree. I, th I think he closed it down quite well. Obviously, he needed Caicedo's block after. Otherwise, what yeah, of Petrovic, course, but... what Petrovic did would have been for nothing. But I think the way he closed it down was actually quite good. But if ne Neshi has a point and, and Thiago gave him the eye first, then Petrovic should have been quicker on his feet in the first place to collect the ball. But the pass also wasn't good. Even but if it's he quite, quite far out as well. That's quite good. Yeah, in a yeah, way. It was to be, to be looking back at it, yeah. The pass was almost going away from him, so yeah. there's an element of Thiago's uh fault in that. But just maybe I'm being harsh, I really can't get away from a 3.5 from him. I'm I really disappointed with his um performances and maybe previous performances, <laughs> it's influence in that rating, but 3.5 yeah. for me. I hear it. I hear it. I, I was probably going to go roughly similar area, like three and a half, four. It doesn't matter which one I pick. It will be a four overall, <coughs> which it's difficult because did he indirectly cost us? Yes. But did we go 2-1 up and was he at four for the 2-2? Two, two? No. So, you know, I, I think a four is about fair. Um, we move up the pitch we, we, because we don't want to sit here for, for too long tonight, guys. We, we've decided to kind of like each of us pick out two players or whatever where we want to say like a bit more for the others we're going to be a bit quicker with just stating rating and maybe a couple of words um Pachim, you said one of the guys that you did want to say a word or two about was Thiago Silva what did you make of Thiago Silva obviously scored great goal that error the nation just spoke about we did add that experience in the defense didn't really help us see out the game to be fair um yeah what do you want to say on him and what would you rate him 
I, th- I, was, I thought it was it was decent to see him back. I think if there was a game, we'd have to see him. I think it'd be this, you know, Sheffield not really, you know, being a team that's uh, relying on speed and counterattacking. Um, that being said, with Thiago Silva, I think the defense looked a bit more organized than it did against United. That, you know, it would be impressive if we looked more disorganized than we did against United. But I think his leadership brought something. I think he was... Uh, his defense kind of sold it with the Bogle goal. I think just Kukurea kind of fell asleep there. But um, I was happy to see him back. I think he was all right. I think maybe if we'd have taken someone off, it might have been him for some height at the end. Um, well, but we I took think... Kukurea off and brought Badia Shiel on, so... <laughs> and Kassalai. I suppose, so you, could, I suppose you could... It didn't fucking help. <laughs> I suppose, yeah, that, that is correct, to be fair. But I think we looked we looked a bit more... It's tough to say if it's because of, you know, the fact that it's Sheffield United, you know, United... Uh, I, saw, I thought we looked a bit more organized. I'm happy to see him back as well. I think uh, I don't think I'm the only ones who've been thinking. You know, have we have we already seen the last of Thiago Silva in the Chelsea shirt? So I'm happy. I was happy to see him back. Um, he's not our first choice center back when everyone's fit. I think everyone knows that. Um, but I think we're a bit more organized, if I'm honest. So uh, if I have to give him a rating, you know, based on for the goal, I'd probably give him a five. Um, just because of the fact that you know we still conceded two goals uh, and we, and we drew, uh, yeah. But I think of our center backs, I think he was by far the best, despite despite the error, despite the error. Yeah, no, I agree completely. Also, can't forget he scored as well. Um, so yeah, no, I would agree with the five. Neshi, would you go along with the five as well, or would you go for something different? No, I agree with Bertram. Yeah, I'll go with the five. Is um, him? I. Uh, I was hope I was in hope that Thiago would kind of help the defense, but it didn't really kind of not quite, <laughs> not, quite not quite unfortunately. It's the point, and then you kind of for those who always say to me that Thiago Silva, you really, I'm kind of ca- quite harsh on Thiago Silva. It just kind of ex- shows that maybe his time is up. For I don't know what you guys think, but I think maybe this season is is the final season for him. Um, but... I mean, it seems it seems like that will be the case anyway. Whether I fully agree with it or not, I, I mean, I think Poch has overdone it a little bit over the last few weeks in terms of never playing him, and also in situations like the United game late on when he brings on a centre back to bring on Chalaba. Now I, I understand it because of counter attacking, and obviously Chalaba is quite a lot quicker than Thiago Silva and the way when United were playing. So I, I, I get it, but still, if you kept him around as like a, a player to like set an example in like training the way to look after yourself, I think that would still be fine. I, I do I necessarily think that he should start every week? No. But do I think this artist should start every week? No. Do I think Bajashir should start every week? No. Uh, do you know what I mean? So th- that's kind of the problem. Like, I think if the others were better, this Thiago Silva stuff wouldn't even be a conversation anymore, really. But because they are not better, that's why it still is a conversation. But hey, um, at the end of the day, the club won't extend his contract, so we'll just have to see how it goes next season when we sign another young centre back and make our defence even younger than it was. So can't wait for that. Um, this Arzi then. Um, I don't think any of us are going to speak too much about him. Honestly, I just he played one nice ball over the top today to was it Palmer or Jackson? No, Madueke actually had nearly got the end of it. Otherwise, I just it just felt dodgy again to me. Like, doesn't win headers. There was this one moment, not long before we conceded, at, towards the end of the first half, or in the first half, when he Thiago Silva heads across, kind of up in the air, because that's the only way he could reach it. Dizazi then had a low, uh, completely unmarked, has the header as the ball comes down from Thiago Silva's clearance. And he heads it straight into the foot of an opponent. And I'm like, this is like, you are a centre-back. You cannot be heading the ball straight to, into the feet of an opponent. Like, you cannot be doing that. Oh, my days. Even when I look at the stats, one out of three aerial duels, disgrace, you're massive. Zero out of two ground duels, zero tackles, how is that possible? One out of four long balls only. Passing accuracy is all right with 89, but that's literally the only thing. Even like general defensive stats, two clearances, five recoveries. It's just not good. Um, What would I give him? I'll give him, I don't know. I wanted to say two, but I felt like that was being, that was an agenda. So I'm going to say three. Nashi, what would you give him? Um, I'll I'll give him a five. Um, just to be quick on him, yeah. I'll just, um, I'm generally quite. He's the most consistent out of all those uh, the defenders we do have. So, um, and late, I felt he got inconsistent again, almost. Yeah, maybe there's moments. Well, what, all of the defenders are inconsistent. Um, but I think 
out of in terms of maybe because he doesn't get injured as well, so we see more of him. But in my eyes, um, I think Tsasi is kind of on my good side in terms of the, the list of defenders we do have. But on this game, I can't really pinpoint any direct mistakes from him. So I'll just go just slightly above. I'll go with a six if I'm being completely honest. I really a can't. Six. Fab. But we yeah. can see the two goals, bro. <laughs> I, I, I do, I know, but I really don't think it was any blame on him. I really feel like the the goals came from the left-hand side, so um, Cucurella's side and Chalabas. So I just can't really put any blame on him. It would be, I don't know what Bertrand thinks, but I really can't think of any mistakes that he's made in that game. So Let's I'll see go. what Bertram does think. I said three. Meishi said six. I just think a six is surprising because Thiago Silva scored and you gave him less. Um, that, that's why I think that the six is quite surprising. Um, but hey, I, I'm not one to like disagree, each to their own. Bertram, how do you see it? What would you what rating would you give him? I suppose I, it's much of the same. I can't, you know, honestly say that I thought of him much this game. I think it was quite an average performance. But the fact is, he still played in the defense that conceded two goals. Um, I gave, gave Thiago a five. I'd probably give uh, Dezazi a 4.5, maybe just under. Uh, I think that's fair, or at least a four, uh, you know, because Thiago, you know, even scored. So uh, that bumps him up. So I'd probably give him a four. But that's not down to, you know, individual mistakes. It's just yeah. down to the fact that I can't remember him doing anything, you know, particularly good. And also the fact that, you know, we still conceded two goals. I hear it. I hear yeah, it. To be, fair, to be fair, just that, yeah, uh, that goal from Thiago is a distant memory. So, yeah. yeah I, I hear yeah, it. You're so five, it's five. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with five. No, fair, fair. I mean, overall, did this, like the full rating from Bertram leaves us at a 4.3. So, we've kind of rounded up to a 4.5. Okay. If you now went five and a half or five, maybe it would be a four. But in the grand scheme of things, um, um, unless you want to change it, then let me know. <laughs> we move over to Trevor Chalaba. Uh, but I might just let you go first. What would you rate him today? A bit more involved, I guess, in things going wrong. But I don't know. I felt like he was still one of the ones that held against it a bit more. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just because I like him. <laughs> I paid more attention to him. Well, yeah, I, th I think a lot of the same. I, I can't, you know, really put a finger on any massive mistake he made. I think he's just a solid center back, and I'm happy to see him back. Uh, mm -hmm. Give him a 4.5 as well, same as Dezazi. I can't really – maybe you could say that he could have done better for one of the goals. I can see that. But I think in general he's, you know, quite solid. And I think he played a solid game, to be honest. So um, I'd probably still give him a 4.5, though, much of the same reasons as for Dezazi. Fair dues. Fair dues. Um, Neishi, then, yeah. do you, would you then give him a similarly quite high rating as Dezazi? Or did you think Chalabar was worse? What, what would you give him? I, I gave Tsasi a five. Well, in terms of Chalaba, I'll give four point five. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed. Um, on that second goal, the the first header, he didn't even jump for it, and I was really frustrated with that. I don't know if you guys noticed that. So, um, it must be. I'll go look it back now because honestly, I didn't really notice it. <laughs> There's a point where he could have got ahead to that, and that really frustrated me. From China, but he has those moments where he just has some laps of more, uh, like he, he doesn't know what to do in certain situations. So, for um, I would mark him slightly down, um, for that, and I'll give him a 4.5. Fair enough, yeah. I'm I might have given him ever like a ever so slightly higher rating than Nizazi personally, but I probably would have even gone four to be honest. So, a four and a half, it shall be. And we move on to well, I guess we can do Cucurella first, um. It's a bit of a tricky one, but I guess we can do Cucurella first. Um, I don't know. Uh, what really still pisses me off is that cross he had in the first half. That was such a good cross. And Palmer just, uh, not Palmer, Jackson completely misread it and got nutmegged by a cross from his own teammate. Like, instead of having a tap in, literally, if he has his footing right, he has a tap in from five yards. It's such a good cross from, from, from Cucurella. I know Jackson probably expected a high cross, and that's why, uh, and then he went through some legs so he didn't see properly. I get it. But even still, should have been as happened. <laughs> um, otherwise, Cucurella losing his man a little bit on that first goal. Yeah. 
but it still went through Caicedo's legs as well. Passing accuracy, okay, 87 is not bad. Successful dribbles, 0 out of 1. Long balls, 0 out of 4. Ground duels, 3 out of 7 is not great either. Aerial duels, three out of uh, 0 out of 2. Oh, my days. It looks worse the longer I look at it. Um, and especially because he was kind of a left wing back, the fact that he has so few, like, attacking stats that are at all positive. Yeah. Um, I'm back to my threes. <laughs> Bertram, thoughts? I think uh, I'd probably give him a four. I also think uh, it's kind of like asking a fish to climb a tree because he just isn't good offensively. You know, this isn't his game in a way. I think he the games he's been best in is when we played, you know, flat flat four, and he's at the one being asked to defend. Or even remember one of Potter's last games, Dortmund at home, when you played left center back in the three. That was arguably his best game for us. Exactly. He was very good there. Very good defender. Uh, I think we have also seen that in the last couple of games. But yeah. that being said, I think his cross was okay uh, to Jackson. Very unfortunate he didn't get the assist for that. Yeah. Um, but again, with most of the team, I can't really... I can't really justify give, giving them a high rating. We played, you know, against 20th uh, away. Who couldn't even sell out, you know, pr- probably maybe what, half of their stadium? That's what it felt like. So so uh, I'd probably just give him, a, give him maybe a three and a half. You know, I'll also go three and a half, actually, because uh, I, I need to give him a little bit of benefit for that cross that should have been an assist. Um, now, you know, two, three and a half. So unless you're going to go very different, you're probably not going to change it. But, but, but quick thoughts and rating? Yeah, no, I'll go with a three and a half. I think that's fair. It's, it's like, as Bertram said, his attacking uh, game is is just is non-existent. It's just it's just not in him. And to think that we paid sixty-five million on him is just is just <laughs> just points back to the recruitment and yeah. and the only thing it does offer is that kind of like um, aggression, really. the aggression get into the ball, and I do like that side of him, and he yeah. does. Uh, Good um, passing ability, and he's, he, he, he sometimes tries to start, start a lot of the attacks. And yeah, not 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 very much to say on him. And I'll go with. I, I think a player. I mean, I I think he will probably be sold in the summer. Maybe we will fail to sell him and have to loan him. Wouldn't be surprised. I do still believe that under the right manager, Kukurella can actually be a really really good player in a in a squad if you just use him right. If you use his strengths, he can be a player that very few players can be like. On this note now, I wasn't really sure until now. L- let me pick a Cucurella one way I say a bit more and I'll also get you in one more time. Because, Bertram, you spoke about his attacking and I-, I mentioned this in a stream a couple of weeks ago or a couple of days ago, whenever it was. The thing is, at Getafe, right, where he was before he went to Brighton, he played left mid or left wing. And that, like, why can he not attack now? Like, it's so weird to me. Even at Brighton, he wasn't initially was playing left wing back only then Potter turned him into that kind of left center back role like hybrid left back left center back right like I, I'm not saying he was probably not amazing at Hatafe like didn't score like loads of goals or get loads of assists or whatever but even still if you've ever once played as a as a attacker or midfielder at least I, I don't understand where it's all gone like I know the premise is a bit different but that just confuses me doesn't that confuse you much? <laughs> Uh, I suppose in a way, I think he had like a future stars card back yeah. then when he had the left yeah. man. I think that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. If I look at the stats, he played the season before he got sold to Brighton. He played 37 games and got three goals. Uh, I think the thing is with with you know Kukure and Hatafe in particular, they're a very very defensive side. Oh, are they? Okay. And I think and I think and I think it's a way of uh, you know doubling up on that side it wouldn't surprise me because he scored one goal for brighton he scored what he scored one for us as well yeah. uh you know out of uh what three seasons so um yeah. we, we I think suppose... he have scored a lot more I remember he had a fair few like quite bad misses and i remember him saying in an interview it's weird that he can't score because in training he scores loads so i'm like but so does Mudrick, so does Mudrick as well yeah exactly exactly uh um, but I think it's it's, a, it's it's like us playing Chilwell left wing and someone signing him because we've played him left wing and they're like, oh, why can't you attack now suddenly? Uh, right. so I just think I just think uh, he's not that's not that's not been you know his forte and I think under a new under under another manager or at least you know for some games I think a lot like Gallagher Gallagher is very good in some games not in others. Mm-hmm. Kukurai might be the same someone where we need to be more defensively stable. But if Chilwell was fit, I think he'd have. Okay, maybe with not not with Chilwell, but his skill set at least would have been better today. 
Yeah, no, it would have been. It would have been. I mean, Naishi, just quickly, if I now picked Cucurella to speak about, well, what are your thoughts on this? Like, I, I get um, Bertram's point, but Gaddafi quite um, defensive. Maybe it was more of a left mid in a in a 3-5-2 situation rather than that it was an actual, like, attacking or, like, a left mid that has a left back behind them. Um, but even still, the way he plays now, okay, that cross was decent. But otherwise... He just runs around like a bit of a headless chicken when it comes to attacking. And he's just, he's also so extremely one footed. Remember that shot against United? I don't know, Nash, you, you, were, you were in the air when this happened. So you might not have seen that one back in any highlights or whatever. But even still, he had a shot with his right foot from the edge of the box. And honestly, it looked like when I tried to shoot with my left foot. And well, I'm not a fucking professional footballer. So I'm allowed having a bad left foot. But, you know, I know left footers are, tend to have a really bad, bad weak foot. But that was, a, that was on another level of bad. But, but, it's just weird because genuinely, like Bertram says, we know he can't attack. But why? He used to do it. So how can he not do it now? It's baffling. I, f- I feel like we got, we just got the wrong profile of a left back. He, he suits that kind of possession-based kind of um, left back, you know, similar to Shushenko uh, for Arsenal, where yeah. they kind of sit in that midfield area where they kind of ball playing left back. And with Chelsea... And the style of play we play at the moment, we need a winger that goes, I mean, a left, a fullback that goes up and down. And he's not that. And he, he's not someone to go touch side to the line and, and take someone on and, and cross the ball in. And which is kind of why he he's, he's so like one footed and he's just, and he, we can't really elevate his, um, his attacking side of his game. So it's, I would say it's, it's just that he's, the team is not suited to him more than his attacking play not um, not there. I think it is there because we've seen it in Brighton. It's just that he, he suits more possession-based um, kind of football. Fair deuce. Fair deuce. No, I hear it. I hear it. Move on to Caicedo, shall we? And actually, this, this was one of the guys that you wanted to speak a bit more about. Weird game from him, right? Because, oh, not weird game from him. First of all, one thing I want to touch on, me and Con spoke, spoke about this quite at length in the last stream against United. For the first time, these two flipped and Caicedo was on the left and Enzo was on the right. And then some, very surprisingly to me at least, it happened again today. We, we weren't really sure why we flipped them against United. Now we flipped them again today. I think Enzo can probably benefit from being on the right, to be honest. But for Kaiser, I don't really understand it, but they were both very like high and in getting involved. Like there was plenty of times Kaiser was like in and around the box trying to play like a last pass or you know being involved. Like I think there was even an occasion where he was thinking to shoot or did he get it blocked or did he lay it off in the end, whatever. But different to usual, but still with the same conclusion that our midfield can't control the game. Exactly. Like like I said, we Kaiser is uh, he's a very crucial part of or scoring forward for, for Chelsea's future. We just need to get him right and, and get his position right because the talent is huge there. And I feel like we're not we're not using, uh, uh, well, Pochettino's not using Casado um, properly. And he's really not a CDM, which is why he moments in games, he makes those crucial uh, mistakes like he did for, for the United game when he uh, put Conacho through. And I feel like he's almost like should be a part of a three midfield um, instead of a two, uh, instead of a pivot, and which is why it's kind of, we're not... Ele- um, they have, I mean, I know Gallagher plays as the 10, but and I know off the ball, Gallagher almost presses the second striker, but indirectly, we kind of have three midfielders on the pitch every game. I know we're still in a pivot, but you, you, get, you know what I mean? Like, we still kind of play with three midfielders every game. Well, I really feel like he needs almost like Gallagher to to sit uh, with alongside them and then have almost like a, a four three three and a flat three yeah, yeah a flat three so it's it's a case of I feel like if we build around Casado I know Palmer is the main guy and he he gets all the headlines and in it he's a, he's a huge talent as well but I really feel he's the key for us to progress and be successful going forward. We need to really get his position right and really get maximize his attributes because the guy is really talented and and a lot of times he's as isolated in that position where Enzo's gone off Gallagher and he's having to literally go on the left side of the pitch, the right side covering both both flanks, 
and that's just not good for him. It's only because his uh, athletic abilities allow him to kind of do half a job. But um, I really think we need to get that right. And it, um, I don't see Pochettino staying any longer. Um, I feel like if the manager does build around Casado, it'll be just, you'll it, see the fruits of it, really. Hopefully, bro. Hopefully. What rating would you give Casado, though? I'm um, particularly this game, uh, uh, just below average, so um, a five. Five. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, Bertram, as I put it to you, stats aren't even that bad. Five out of eight ground duels, two out of three aerial duels. My problem with Casado isn't when he gets into duels. Like, that has actually also progressed as the season's gone on. Um, early in the season, his ground duel ratio was usually pretty poor, but that has improved over the last two, three months. But my problem with him often is the amount of times that he doesn't get into duels. Even that, remember that save for Petrovic in the first half when, what was the guy called, Hamer? He took it round Caicedo. And I know Caicedo is probably careful to not get booked because of the two-game suspension. But even still, you're you're still, in a way, a DM. An average player gets the ball in front of you and does the simplest of shimmies and you just look like you've never even attempted a tackle. Like, it's just baffling. But yeah, um, passing accuracy weren't great with 79, but I guess not. not totally shocking but um Bacham, what would you give Kaizedo? i think you know pretty average performance from him i think you know it's almost what we come to expect with Kaizedo. Hmm. i think a five is you know about all right uh the things he does he does all right but sometimes you would wish you know a bit more from him uh and yeah. i think that might come with the right coach and just you know implementing the right system but uh for today i'd just give him a five below average as uh as they said Fair dues. I, I would have gone four and a half, but that leaves it at a five. Regardless, we move on to Enzo. I don't think any of us want to particularly highlight him today, honestly, I, other than that he was beefing Chris Wilder for some baffling reason. <laughs> um, I don't really remember. Ooh, I've just looked at some stats. Zero out of five ground duels. That is disgraceful. Three out of five aerials. It's quite interesting because he was quite small. Two out of, uh, zero out of zero tackles. Okay, two uh, zero out of two crosses, a bit meh. Even for himself, two out of seven long balls is dreadful. The passing 80% is not good enough for him either. Honestly, having seen these stats now, I'm giving him a four. What would you give him, Bertram? I think that's fair. I don't think he was uh, he was good. I also think the way you know we've tactically set up, it was for him to have the ball at the edge of the area and to kind of pick someone out. I also think we didn't help him that much. You know, I, I remember a couple of times when he was, you know, at, at the right side of the box and he was just kind of looking around for someone and he had to try these risky passes, which is, you know, m might explain why the passing accuracy is so low. Um, but I think for his, for the lofty standards that he has, you know, we have seen some very, very impressive passes from him. Uh, you would expect more, but, you know, two things can also be true at the same time. I also think we didn't help him as much as, you know, maybe we should have. So uh, I think... Perhaps a four is fine. Perhaps you know, showing his defensive uh, liabilities as well, or at least for today. Yeah, no, he, he did in a way. It's, I mean, whenever I just I talk about this midfield, I say it on ends. I'm like, you can't control a game. There's some people like Pais say, oh, we had all the possession, isn't that controlling? On the ball, they're fine. On the ball isn't the problem, other than when like I said against United, give the ball away stupidly. On the ball is my issue. The, my issue is off the ball. Now. Sure, the main problem of that is Poch, of the rest defence, the structure, the way we press and then don't push up the rest and whatever else, gaps. But even still, I will never go away from the point that if you're two good midfielders playing together, especially speaking the same language, having a good relationship, probably, I don't know it, but I think probably being quite close as being one of the two young Spaniards that have joined the club, right? Um, not Spaniards, Spanish speaking, obviously. Um like, surely you need to understand, shit, we're getting overrun in midfield constantly here. We need to, like, one of us needs to sit. We need to stay a bit closer to each other. And they never do it. It just pisses me off. Like, this is my, one of the big problems in modern football, that players are so overcoached in, in, in academies that they forget they, they forget any self-responsibility and self-understanding of what I need to do to adapt in a game. And, and that's one of the most, maybe they learn it as they get older again, but I feel like, Players used to be better at this at a younger age. Maybe it's just these two, but I still think highly of them. It's just, it just isn't quite working, is it? Um, Neshi, two fours. Um, what you're going to give Enzo? Is that about where you'd go after hearing some stats as well? Zero out of five ground duels. Not exactly great, is it? No, that's not that's not great at all. And um, I wouldn't really put that to on him. I think it's just been overused. And um, it, it would tell he was really tired in this game. And uh, 
and I'll go along with you guys with a four. Fair dues. Fair dues. Move on then. Um, I would usually probably do Gallagher first, but I guess we'll do Madueke first. Um, uh, and Bertram, you want to speak on him for a bit longer? I, I just do it pretty quickly. Scored a good goal. 95% passing accuracy as well. Um, okay, successful dribbles. Don't fully agree with the number, but it's a zero out of two. Don't think that is quite accurate in how I <laughs> um, identify or would describe um, or define a successful dribble. But anyway, two out of six ground duels, not great. Although I think also given wrong decisions against him on a few of these, where I think it, should, it was just fouled. Um, but he scored the only, well, no, not the only goal, but the only good goal. <laughs> no, Jamie Samuel's goal was a good goal, but from open play, right? Um, and especially when we were chasing it. So because of that, I'm going to... I think he was still at least he was still the only driving force that was that could have made anything happen, even if he was frustrating at times. That, that cross that he had and whatever else. I'm gonna say seven. Maybe that's slightly too high, but I'm gonna say seven because yeah, I'm gonna say seven. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, but um, what would, what did you make of Madueke today? You can elaborate, like like you said, and what rating would you give him? I'd maybe give him a six point five, but uh, it's not that important. I think he was, uh, as you said, you know. One of our, our good players today, one of the only driving forces we had, I think a player with his skill set, we don't have that much of. Uh, he did that uh, that move that he did against United as well, when he kind of just, you know, ran around at the defender uh, and he scored a very good goal. And I think, you know, him beginning to have some end product is very, you know, hopeful to us. At least, you know, it might just put a couple of mil on it if we want to sell him to, uh, this summer as well. Uh, but very good goal. Very, uh, very well shot. Um and but I, don't worry you know, about him. We're not selling him because he's not pure profit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I th- well, well, the thing is with him is he uh, he's done that move a couple of times. You know, he could have scored. I could have scored. He had that chance maybe three or four times a day. So, uh, yeah. you know, perhaps if, you know, with more coaching, more training, he might be able to score more goals. Um, but the thing is with Madueke, he had this period around, you know, the Palace and Luton game as well, in which he was very decisive. Yeah. And I hope he just continues this as well and not, gets pushed out the team because I think he is very good. And I think he's uh, been the difference maker for us these past two games. Uh, so I hope He just seems to be better off the bench. I don't know why, but he seems to. Yeah, but that's that's why it's important that he scored today as well and a very good goal. And uh, quickly, I want to touch upon the fact that, you know, we've all seen the clips of him trying to take the penalty off Cole Palmer. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. I think it shows good character. I think everyone comes out of the situation good. Uh, I think, you know, Chalaba and, you know, Gilchrist come out of it good because they tell him to uh, you know f off in a way he shows character he wants to take in cole palmer he shows that he was able to score and it was just a quick side note but uh i think he's a character and i hope uh i hope it uh i hope matt Weck at least materializes some of his potential here if we're going to talk about this it's actually an interesting thing to bring up um i i disagree i disagree not <sighs> i understand what you're saying in terms of it shows character that he wanted to take it in the first place and that's I can even accept that that's fine and maybe even a positive thing, but he overdid it. First of all, he asked him too late. Don't ask him once Palmer has already got the ball in his hand, stood over the penalty spot. Too late. Like by then, by that point, let let Palmer concentrate and get in the focus to score his penalty in the fucking last ninety plus tenth minute to get us a draw against United at the time. It's not the moment to like start quit making Palmer question things. Now I know Palmer is cold as ice anyway, so it doesn't affect Palmer, but. It could. So, I, the, he, like I say, I, I just think he stood there too long. And the fact that he needed Chalabar to pull him away meant that he wasn't giving up once Palmer said no one. And that's where I have the problem. Ask once? Okay, fair enough. Even if I'm not the biggest fan of it, because I think it should be clear, that's more on the manager. But after you've asked once and, the, and he says no, with the record that Palmer has, you should not be questioning it again. It, it's just my take. Again, everyone can have different thoughts on this. Um, Neshi, rating for, for my record today? And by the way, Bertram, I think I might also add up mine to a six and a half. I think a seven is a bit too high, especially because I also think it was some poor goalkeeping as well. Um, not not like a goalie error, but I think the goalie made it way too obvious that he was flying to the far post that, you know, Noni could just smack it in at, at the near post high and knew there was no way he would save it anymore um, because it's more difficult for the player to go far post. So in that sense, it's just a bit poor goalkeeping for me anyway. Um, but yeah, and actually, what, what rating would you give him? And obviously, if you want to say a couple of words, please do. Yeah, I'll go with uh, uh, with a six point five as well. Um, I was I was considering seven because I was really happy with Madueke. and it's just unfortunate that Palmer 
is um, plays in that position because I, I really can't see uh, um, Madueke starting over Palmer consistently. So that's an issue in itself, but it's a good problem for our manager. But Madueke is really talented. He really, he's really productive. I've, I've spoken about him, how he constantly takes on his man and he constantly keeps um, the opponent guessing and that, Goal was brilliant. He, um, he had a similar shots and he went for the top left, but he noticed um, that wasn't working out. I think he went for that near post, which is really clever for him. From him, and, finish, yeah. yeah, exactly. And uh, just to touch on what you said, Lawrence, yeah. uh, about I feel like he he's better off the bench rather than um, rather than starting, which is maybe a bit harsh on him. It's just I feel like. He should be that kind of bench player, but they, 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 I can understand why he rewarded him with the start. So, yeah, I'll go with the six one first. Fair deuce. And Neshi, one of the players that you wanted to speak about more, Conor Gallagher. Um, or did I read that wrong? No, you did say that, right? Yeah, yes. Yes, you did say that. Um, what did you make of him? Obviously, got the assist for the Thiago Silva goal with the corner, which I guess that is positive. Um, otherwise, Honestly, today he's a difficult one. 96% passing accuracy. Okay, it's zero out of two dribbles, one out of two crosses, two out of two long balls, one out of one tackle, four out of eight ground duels. Okay, zero out of three error duels. That one's maybe not as good. But I feel today... Uh, part of it was all right anyway, but whatever wasn't right to me wasn't on him because why on earth was he playing the position that he played? That, that, that's my biggest issue today. But but how do you see it, Neji? I do think it was a, it was a good assist from him, but in general sense, I just sometimes it's similar to Cucurella. Like I feel like sometimes Gallagher is just running around the pitch like a headless chicken. Like honestly, yeah, and I really do get why people like Gallagher and he's passionate and he's got the energy. But I think there's a there's a barrier with him. There's a kind of like if you look at the whole squad and about his ability. I think it's just an average player, if I'm being honest. And I feel like it, this is the best we're going to get from Gallagher. And I would prefer Chukumeka in that position. I think he'll a lot more, a lot more attacking progress. And it's just a better player, if I'm completely honest. And I feel yeah. a limitation with Gallagher. And that might sound harsh, um, but I just really feel like uh, Chelsea's football club should take that opportunity and um, sell him from uh, sell him from being honest. But particularly looking at this game, I would say that it was um, just below, or the assist probably bumps him up to a five point five. But I just ordered him. Bro, if you don't think it was good, you can go lower. I don't think anyone's like <laughs> having a go at you. It, it sound the way you said this. Felt like you don't really want to go five or even five and a half. So if you want to go lower, go lower, bro. No, to be fair, that 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 assist was a was a great cross in the ball, and and I think um, he he's one of our good uh, corner takers, which is which is an asset to to the team. So but purely on that assist, I would bump him up to a five point five if I'm being honest. Fair dues, then. Fair dues, Patrick. What would you give Gallagher today? Obviously, you had that assist. One other thought thing that stands out from him for me is that that shot that he had that he went so far over. Um, otherwise, I can't really remember much other than him being on the left and passing it backwards to Caicedo and Cucurella most of the time. Well, yeah, I think uh, fair enough assist. We, he put it on a play for Thiago Silva. I'd give him yeah. a 3.5. Uh, that might just be my memory because I can't remember him doing anything else. Uh, I just think he was poor. Might not be, you know, his game. But um, I for for today's rating, I'd give him a three point five. Fair enough with the assist. But I just think he was poor. Didn't really do anything. Um, realistically, maybe halted some of our attacks. I still do like Gallagher, but I just think for today, I'd uh, shove him down to three point five. All right, it's it's a tricky one for me because obviously the assist, I need to bump it up a little bit. It's also like. Do I think it's totally fair that the defenders have higher ratings than Enzo and Cucurella and, in, in your estimation, Gallagher? I don't know. Maybe we were a bit nice to the defenders in that sense. Um, because of the assist, 
may seem I'm just keeping it simple, and partly I am just keeping it simple. But maybe I would have gone four without the assist, and I give him a four and a half. And that keeps it also simple, and we just leave it as that. It's a tricky one. I do quickly want to speak on Palmer myself because he got himself another assist, um, a decent assist as well. Obviously, most of the the work was done by Madueke, okay, clearly, but still, you know, made sure he get, keeps his goal involvement up. Um, Expected assist was actually 0.07. So, you know, it shows you what a good goal it was for Maduake. But in general, I don't think Palmer had one of his best days. I mean, he was still very clear that he was at least trying to, like, take the game a little bit by the scruff of the neck. He dropped a bit deeper. He was trying to, like, shoot. He had that one decent shot that the goalkeeper put over the bar. But I know he's in attacking position, but even still, only 24 out of 34 passes completed 71% isn't great. Zero out of four crosses... Okay, dribbling isn't his main thing anyway, but yeah, I, I wasn't that impressed today with, with, with Palmer, but at the same time, he's been so phenomenal for us. Maybe we, like, and also the fact that he was subbed off tells me that he was tired. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been subbed off because Palmer never is subbed off. And that's, that tells me that he was probably tired, maybe even going into the game. I know for a fact, by the way, that usually on the Pochettino so far, the the lineup is usually chosen the day before. And today and yesterday, that wasn't the case. There was no final lineup yesterday, so it was decided today, which makes me think there was quite a few tired legs, and it was kind of like difficult. Okay, who is fit enough to play? Who isn't? Stuff like that. So um, maybe Palmer was one of those that suffered from it. But in reality, I, I mean, he also got an assist, so I'm also going to give him a four and a half. I generally don't think he tried a bit harder, but he's a very different kind of player. In the grand scheme of things, I don't think he was better than, than Gallagher. Maybe people will hate me for this now, but yeah, uh, obviously this isn't a, a criticism for him overall. It's just for today. I just won't quite it. I felt one not quite it. Nesh, what did you think of Palmer today? What rating would you give him? Yeah, um, I, it wasn't. It's definitely not his best games. I think his ball retention, his game um, was, was not great, and I think he forced a lot of things today. It was it just wasn't his usual self, and that's probably due to. Um, um, overload of games and um, and with that assist it was just a, a simple layoff to to Mudueke. so it wasn't like a, a poor cutting through uh, assist it wasn't like a, a hey, it was a bit of a through ball but like but on the wing so like not special yeah it wasn't anything special so yeah. in terms of rating is it's a difficult one because I love Palmer if I'm being honest and maybe yeah. I'm biased with him um I'll say for his standard, I'm just I'm I'm torn between four point five and a five, just because I like him. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. give. Fair enough, fair enough, Bertram. What well, rating would you would would you give Palmer today? I've seen a few people in the chat. Jay says he was two. It was a two for me. Shocking. Vic highlighted Palmer walk to take a corner kick twice. Now I'm not sure what the score was when he did that, so it's a bit difficult to judge. If we're leading, I don't think that's a problem. Add one all. Maybe a bit annoying, but also like what we often need is a bit more calmness anyway. So, you know, maybe a bit of an exaggerated, exaggerated criticism, I feel big. But yeah, what about what about you, Bertram? A four and a half and a five so far? Well, I think that that's around fair. Um, I'd maybe even give him, I think 4.5 would probably be, uh, be best. I think given the fact that our tactics seemingly are just give him the ball and hope. I, it's, I can't always criticize him for, you know, wanting to be the main guy, wanting to take the shots. Uh, fact of the matter is sometimes it does hold our attacks, but, you know, who's, who's he going to pass it to in a, in, if you look at it that way as well? Um, I think you got an assist. You touched upon it. I think that's more Matuweke's goal than it's Palmer's assist, but hey, an assist, an assist at the end of the day. Very good for our agenda when we uh, when we use it on Twitter. You know, yeah. just another another golden assist to keep it going. But uh, I think for his lofty standards as well, I don't think he'll be happy for the game. Uh, so I think a four point five is around fair, given the fact that he did make an assist. But you know, at the end of the day, it wasn't as influential as he usually is. Fair news, fair news, and we finish the starting eleven at least off with Nicholas Jackson. Ah, uh, frustrating still for me that he just misread that Cucurella cross completely. I think at the time, wouldn't that have made it 2-0 or was that a 1-1? I feel like that was at 1-0, you know? And I feel like it was, that would have made it 2-0. Yeah, so that, that I mean, as we learned on Thursday, there is every chance Chelsea bottle it 2-0 just as much as there is the chance they bottle it 1-0. So let's not say Jackson not scoring that cost us the whole game now. There's no guarantee for that whatsoever. But 
it would have certainly put us in a better position. Passing accuracy, 55%. Well, that's a how. <laughs> uh, 16 out of 29. You don't want that, do you? Uh, that, that is not very good. Um, dribbles, though, the most uh, completed in the game. Um, three out of five. It's all right, I suppose. Uh, oh, no, it's good, I guess. Um, ground yours, four out of 10. Should be doing a bit better, but then, you know, the type of team that Sheffield United is, big defenders and stuff. Ever deals, he actually got three out of five, so at least above, uh, above, you know, more than 50%. So I guess that's okay. But yeah, it's, it's a typical Jackson game for me where I'm like, I mean, he had, did he even have a shot? No, didn't have a single shot. And so, sometimes, I mean, I know some people disagree with this. I still feel like these are the types of games where you see that he's not a true striker. Um, that will still maybe come because he's still only 22. People like to forget. But yeah, he made he ran some good channels. He, he did some good, you know, twists and turns like that that Cucurella cross that he then missed himself to the turn that he made and then the plot pass out why to Cucurella himself that's really good work from him um but yeah the one chance he had he didn't even kick the ball he just let it go through his legs I don't know what he was doing um and otherwise he didn't even like get like do anything remotely close to getting a goal and as much as he's a striker that's involved in build-up play he's still a strike so like to not have a shot shot is poor I can't even like he is poor and with that said I feel harsh. Like if I give Jackson a three now, I feel like I'm, I'm like blaming or singling out Jackson, which first of all, I don't want to do. And second of all, I also don't think it's fair on him. So I'm going to have to say four purely because I think it would be unfair to him to get a three because I think it was more of a, the way we attack today, maybe purely a lack of gusto. It just, it just didn't work. Like maybe it's also the way Jeffrey and I defended how slow, tired and everything else we were today. But yeah, um, I, I would feel harsh if I give him three because it, I felt a lot of it was an isolation that wasn't necessarily his fault because he did run a lot, make a lot of runs, come deep, run, you know, run the channels. So yeah, um, I'm gonna say four, but I understand if people say less, less as well. Absolutely, um, Nation. Then I'll let you go first. What, what would you give Jackson? Yeah, this is a difficult one uh, with Jackson. Um, I would say whew, I'm torn between four and four point five because yeah, yeah, that. Uh, Cross, um, he should have really put that away, and that's that's the issue with Jackson. He's he's got everything else. I really um, uh, see value in his hold up play and his um, general uh, play, and 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 I'm agreement with you. He's more of a of a like a centre forward than a out and out striker. So it will be helpful if in the summer we can get someone to kind of be that uh, out and out striker. Um, but purely on this game. Yeah, um, I'd go with a 4.5 just not to be harsh on him because I've seen pro progression in his game. Maybe not on his finishing, but in the ge in his general play, I've seen progression. Yeah, I, I mean, I do hear what JP says. This was last play Sheffield, I have to say it again, the worst team in the league. By far, everyone beats them. True. But then Liverpool at, at Anfield were kind of struggling until McAllister scores that screamer. The difference between us and Liverpool is when they go 2-1 up, they make a 3-1. When we go 2-1 up, we shit ourselves and concede a 2-2 at the end. <laughs> so that, that is obviously a problem. But a 4 from me, a 4.5 from Nancy, what would you give Jackson? I'd give him a 3.5 if I'm honest. I do see what you're, talk, what, what, what you're talking about when you say that you know he's been isolated. But I think we've seen in other games... That he's more able to uh, to still be influential. <laughs> now you know I'll go with the four. I think I think he still he had his moments, not you know the the, the type we wanted to, unfortunately, <laughs> but I think he had his moments. Uh, I think he tried. I still think it would be tough for him, but at the end of the day, he didn't really do anything to deserve more than a four. Uh, if that's his fault, if it isn't his fault, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. So uh, I'd give him a four. Uh, I'd also be patient with him. I still think he is quite good. Uh, I do see shades of Dragba with him, so uh, I hope he can continue his uh, development next season. Wow. I've just seen a crazy stat. <laughs> a crazy stat. Um, as we are about to, obviously, that leaves us at a four. We're about to do the subs and then punch. But just quickly, let me bring up a stat here. Um, Chelsea are the first team in the league to go to Sheffield United and not have 10 or more attempts on goal. Brilliant. Just a little, you know, Pice followed it up with a tweet. Palace at 26, City at 30, Everton at 16, Newcastle at 22, Man United at 14, Wolves at 10, Bournemouth 23, Liverpool 15, Brentford 10, Luton, even Luton 12, West Ham 16, Villa 14, Brighton 24, Arsenal 22, Fulham 24, and Chelsea 
six. What a manager and team we have. Don't I love it? Don't I love it? Um, any thoughts? Anything that you want to say, or shall we just leave it at that? <laughs> if we, were, if only we would have had in Kunku, then it would have been all, all been fine. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Kunku would have saved us. We would have won seven two at least. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, let's quickly do the subs. Obviously, um, Carney came on for I can't type for Cole Palmer, which was surprising that Palmer was the one to be subbed off. But I guess we were just just took the two one lead and Palmer was tired. But the much bigger problem was, or much bigger concern for me was, why did the subs, excuse me, happen so late? Again, I know we took the lead in the 66th minute, but why was that? Like, we were so bad for ourselves. Why was there no change at time? Why? Tell me, Pochettino, why? But anyway, um, Modric later came comes on for, for, for Madueke. Honestly, he did nothing other than lose a header in the process of the last goal. Um, Cucurella was replaced by the issue. Love that. Big Ben did nothing again. Um, and at the end, Kasadai came on for Jackson. So that didn't quite help either. Uh, I don't think there's much to be said on any of them other than maybe Carney, um, who maybe you could argue given a rating for, but even him, I don't genuinely think so. He came on in the 75th, uh, 75th minute. Yeah, he, he did all right. I didn't notice Mudrik other than losing that I didn't notice Big Ben other than losing that either. And I didn't notice Kasadai at all. So... <laughs> um, I don't think there is that much to say. Obviously, if you boys do have something to say on any of them, you can in a second. I will start bringing Pochettino up um, and I'll bring you in on that first and foremost. Neshi, what would you give Poch then? Obviously, if you want to say anything on the subs, hit that yeah. as well. Pochettino zero. I don't know what was going on at all. And I, I really hope he doesn't make it, make it to the end of the season. We really need to get him gone. We're just wasting time to be honest. Just really. I mean, but don't you think it's a bit late now? Like, because yeah. what, what managers are available that you could get right now? Otherwise, we'd have to do interim for, what, four weeks again or five weeks again? It's not ideal either, is it? Yeah, no, the, the, that is a point, to be honest. Yeah, I feel like, but they need to almost make that decision now. If you know yeah, what I mean, I make, that. internally make that decision now. That this, yeah, and this... look, seriously look and see if we can't somehow convince any of these other managers to go to us over elsewhere. Exactly. So that's the only probably good thing that the ownership have done since since they've taken over is giving him a two year contract. I think that was really smart of so we, so uh, zero from if only was a one year contract, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just one final thing on uh, oh. Big Ben. Really concerned about him. It's I don't know what's happened to him. It's I really had high hopes. I, I don't know what you guys think on him, but it's just yeah. not looking. I said it a couple of times over the last few days after United and in the preview yesterday. I said last year, let's not get too overhyped. He's only played 10 or 12 games. They were none of the big games because he wasn't eligible in the Champions League for us. So he played in the games that none of the other players even tried anymore for because obviously we all know half of them wanted to leave. Then Lampard turned up and no one tried anymore. So having good games in that scenario is all well and good. But now he's had at least as many bad games as he's had good games. Um, last season so but conclusion of that is neither is he amazing like people thought last season nor is he absolutely awful like people think now it's a mix of the two you need we, we need to just wait how he develops but yeah it's certainly not of the level where you're going into next season saying but yes is our starting center back absolutely not i think that's for sure um Bacham, pochettino then she went cold and simple gave him a zero Knowing you, you're probably not going to say zero, but I also know that you're disappointed. So what rating would you give Poch? I'd give him a zero, actually. I think, oh, yeah. I love that. I, I, I have, I, defending and defending, I still, I think he has a lot of the blame, but I think, you know, against Burnley, for example, I wouldn't give him all of the blame. I think he coached a fair enough team. We missed a lot of chances. Yeah. He doesn't have control over, you know, mistakes we've made. I think even against Leicester, I think a lot of these games... He's coached us to, to a very good position. Even United, you know, he coached us to be 2-0 uh, up. He's, but why he isn't he coaching them. the players to stop making mistakes, though? Well, I, I, think, I, I think that goes back to the fact that this is a young team. And I think it's it's not it's not mistakes in a way that... It's, it's, like, it's like if you're a goalkeeper and you just... A ball comes toward you and you try and catch it and it goes in. It's like a freak error. I think a lot of the the, the errors that we've uh, conceded to, you know, the Petrovic, you know, not save. It's a freak error. A hundred times out or 99 out of a hundred times, he saves that ball. I think Caicedo, 
I don't think he makes that mistake if you uh, play that scenario again, or at least maybe maybe once out of a hundred times. I think a lot of the games where we've lost points have been because of freak errors. I think today we were bad, we were very bad from start to finish. I think tactically maybe wasn't the right thing to do. I think his subs didn't work. Uh, and I think I just uh, read a stat from Ben Jacobs that said that we haven't had a clean sheet away from home since the 2nd of October against Fulham, which is a Bro. terrible stat. Since the 2nd of October? Away oh, clean sheet, God. yeah. The, also, and, obviously, this is now the seventh game in a row where we've conceded at least two goals, with obviously United conceding three. And otherwise, we conceded two in seven games in a row now. It's a disgrace. Exactly. And if you look at a player like Nadia Schill, we all remember Rudiger, you know, before Tuchel came in under Lampard. We didn't know what kind of player we had. And I think no. we saw we saw Nadia Schill last season. Of course, he's had an injury. I don't think he's as bad as he's playing now. Uh, no. So I just think the thing with, is with Poch, I I think we I think we don't get take this wrong. I think we owe him the rest of the season, but more so the fact that we give him the rest of the season. He tries to see it through. We get to the end of the season at least. Out, outwardly, we can communicate, you know, to other managers as well. He's been given a chance. If we fire him now, what, what, what's what's going to happen? We're going to find some injury manager. The same thing's going to happen as it did last season, where you know no one really cares. There is still is a chance that Poch, if Poch wins, you know, the next what eight eight nine games, he'll probably be here. So you know, fair enough. But if he doesn't, the whole can... thing. If he wins the next eight nine games, yeah, and if he won all thirty eight games, we won the league. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, like, yeah, if... yeah, I understand. And you know, if if my grandmother had wheels, she'd be a bike. All of that. But yeah. I also think in the hunt for new manager, we'd also be able to say, okay, look, uh, fair enough. We fired this guy after a season. We gave him a whole season. We supported yeah, him. Just showed him the, the table. I think they'd understand. <laughs> we yeah, we decided that throughout the whole season he didn't really improve any of the players. We didn't conclusively get better. Uh and that's why we, we've decided to go for someone else. So at least, you know, when we're trying to find a new manager, we can show them this. Uh for today, I think we were bad, really bad. I can understand mistakes cost us, but we were still bad. Six shots on target when, you know. All the others have had over 10 speaks for itself. So uh, yeah. I think for today, I'd give him a zero. Uh, actually, you're, it's wishful thinking there, bro. That six shots ain't, ain't even on target. That's just like on goal, as they say in England, which just means six shots. Only three of them were actually on oh. target. <laughs> a bit disappointing, to be honest. Yeah, it, it would have been, to be fair, to the other stat, it would have been crazy if all these other teams... if if. Fulham had 24 shots on goal, on target, sorry. Again, that would have been very crazy. <laughs> well, I suppose, so, what, what, what is their goal difference? Like minus 54 or something? Minus In a 50. sense, <laughs> minus, minus 50. 50. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we contributed to what? Two of those goals? Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Well, and the last time we played them, how many goals did they score then? We only scored two. So we've... We've scored about against them this season in total about oh, yeah. half of the goals that Newcastle scored in one game there as well. Exactly, exactly. Um, I'm going to keep it simple. I agree with Azira. Do I want to give him a poo emoji? Yes. But I'm almost past that. Like even now, like I know today infuriated me again after on Thursday we were all even a bit happier with him and the whole situation. But I'm just so long past it. Like I was in January and, and, and even early February, I was very adamant. Sack him now. I was especially once we made the Carabao Cup final. I was like, sack him. Give us a chance of winning this final, please. I was like, Jose's just been sacked. He's right there. Just, it, just for the final. Just until the end of the season. Just Jose slapping some discipline into these lot before you can get a different proper manager in. Because Jose's still different to like Lampes. And also it's a different squad that's not 95% of it leaving. If you, just if you gave it Jose in February until the end of the season, I don't know if he would have accepted, but at least try, man. I think we win the final with him, and I think a lot of these players would have benefited from a bit of discipline and also from learning a bit of how to actually defend. Um, would have learned a lot from that. It's like what Roma are benefiting from now. A lot of people are talking about, ah, oh, look how great Roma are now that Jose's left and how they're great they are under De Rossi. But if you've watched them, you see, okay, De Rossi is now playing a lot more expansively. But what Roma have learned in the last three years on a Jose is they now, when they are under the cush, when they are under pressure, they have now learned how to deal with that. And that's why their results have gone up so much. Because they are, they're, it's not like basketball like us to that extent, but it's a lot of back and forth at Roma nowadays with, with De Rossi. 
but because they've now learned to defend, that now leads to wins. So that's why I feel like we could have used Jose in that positive sense with a different manager next season, but it is what it is. Um, I think we're back to the good days, right? Because Oli, I think it was it the other week, told me maybe nowadays instead of upwards and onwards, we should say backwards and downwards because, mate, <laughs> that's what it is these days. Um, but no, I, I try to remain positive. It's not no game until next Monday now. Oh, infuriating me. I mean, some Champions League to look, to, to watch. Some Europa League, Conference League, where it might be next season. But not if we keep drawing games like this, then we won't be in any of these things. Um, but yeah. Please do check out Naishi's Twitter down in the description below. Check out Pertram's Twitter down in the description below. Bertram doesn't use it particularly a lot. I'm not quite sure how often Naishi uses it, but check them out anyway. Drop them a follow. The more of you to do that, the more active they'll be, I promise. Um, but yeah, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe. Hit that like button. It would be massively appreciated. And as much as I find it funny, backwards and downwards, I'm going to have to stick with upwards and onwards. And um, I brought my own outro. So we're going to just start again and say thank you guys for watching. Up the chills, upwards and onwards, and we will see you next time.